Where actors and mobsters meet, illegal activities are soon to follow. When gambling goes wrong and gunshots ring out, bodies fall. What really happened to Thomas Fatty Walsh? We'll pull up a chair and join us around the haunting table. Welcome back, everybody, to The Haunting Table. How are we doing, everybody? How are we doing, good, boys? Good, good. Yep, good, doing good. pretty good. good. Episode pretty good. number eight. Wow. wow. Yeah. We're and getting up there. We are. We are getting up there, and we're going to get up there a lot faster now that we are doing what we are doing. Uh, but before we get into that, let me introduce ourselves. I am your ghost boy, Jake Woods. Accompanied by Ghost Boy Tyler Carolini, Thank you so much. For Anthony What's up? What's up? and Ghost Boy Anthony Adamson. Hello, guys. How's it going? Good, 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 good. How are we doing today? How was how, how was your holiday weekend? I should ask. How was the holiday? It was uh, it was good. It was uh, had spent like pretty much the day with the family. Um, didn't break any COVID rules or anything. Kept it under. So our no minimum. singing. Uh, what? You better That's not cool. have sang. Yeah, it's against COVID stuff. Yeah. That it's the easy way to spread the shit. But no, oh, I, go. uh, I was singing real... WAP all night at, at my uh, grandma's house for Thanksgiving. Grandma but, even got in on it. <laughs> Damn it, Grandma! We're gonna die now. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. It, it, Thanksgiving didn't seem like a normal Thanksgiving just because of COVID. I no. mean, it was nice to see family and friends and stuff like that, but. It was a little bit more somber, you know what I mean? Just because you know that some people that would have been there weren't there and that right. kind of stuff. So, and we but, didn't get to have a friendsgiving this year, which really blew. Yeah, blew that chunks. sucks. But you know, we had a Black Friday where everyone was packed in like sardines in the fucking stores. Of we course. had that. Of course, we had that. Right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we're not getting I, into this. No. <laughs> But yes, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to episode number eight of The Haunting Table. Um, if you haven't listened to episode number seven, The Velisca X Murder House, go check that out. Um, it's it's a lot of fun, and it was actually the first episode of this format that we are currently in right now, which is remote. So we are at our houses in the comfort of our own homes, which you can see portions of our homes on the YouTube video. You can see where we're at. Because, uh, unfortunately, we are unable to do investigations in person right now. There are a lot of places we can't get into, especially around us. And all the places we would be able to get to get to are probably out of our price range travel-wise. <laughs> we're, we're not making too much money yet. But that's not the point we're, why we're doing this. But that's just, you know, it's an unfortunate circumstance. So, right now, we are able to, in other ways, not able to uh, reach out to further off places we would normally not be able to go so unfortunately there's no investigation but we can tell really cool stories further away than just places we can get to um but yeah so hopefully you're all right with that um let, let us know what you think though if you follow us on any of our social media accounts which is haunting underscore table for twitter and for instagram follow us on there look at pictures we're still posting all the time um just go over there and let us know what you think of this format, if you like it or not. Uh, unfortunately, even if you don't like it, we're just going to keep doing it. <laughs> we kind of have to. We're gonna, so We're going to weed out the stragglers here. Yep, 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 yep. But anyway, um, so yeah, like I said, visit us on at haunting underscore table for Twitter and Instagram. Give us a follow there and just keep up to date with what we're doing, where we're going, and some cool pictures of the, the uh, stories we tell. And then... Uh, plugs for i guess i would say anthony let's let's go ahead and because we did actually do a demo line of merchandise uh, merch for hoodies and stuff and there were we, a, a lot of people that reached out and wanted to help us out so they bought some merch and anthony has a list of names of these awesome people we're going to thank real quick um we're, we're going to do that do you want to do that now or do you want to do that later let's just do it now yeah yeah um, let's do it now go ahead and send it out and say yeah. thanks to everybody for for those who bought that uh, you know demo merch 
these are the people that supported us and purchased uh kind of if you people that are watching youtube it's what i'm wearing now it's a haunting tables hoodie it's got some uh cartoon ghosts on it for people that aren't watching on youtube really cool really crisp um so we have rashad gabby markwell dustin nicole alan eric kathy ray Lori. then i gotta go to the next screen real quick mm -hmm. we have uh daryl Braden, Brian, Kristen, then Michael Jr., Steven, and Mike. Anyone that I forgot? Uh, not that I know of. I don't think so. Nope. Yeah. So thank all you very people. much, guys. Yes. We appreciate all the support. And thank you so much. We appreciate it. And then soon that's going to – towards the end of the episode, we're going to talk more about mm -hmm. how what we have coming up and all that fun stuff. But – we have an awesome story that we're going to tell today, so let's just go ahead and jump into these disclaimers really quick and get that out of the way. First and foremost, of course, we are not professionals in what we do. We're just three ghost boys looking to have some fun and enjoy reading and, and investigating supernatural activity from the afterlife ghosts. So we are not professional Ghost hunters, we're not professional ghost busters, and we're definitely not professional ghost nutters. Ghost nutters. Oh, so that the unfortunate awesome. <laughs> <laughs> The unfortunate part about being on Discord is we can't synchronize that because, oh my God. because the audio's got like a little bit of a lag, but yes, oh, we're not I'm, I'm not <laughs> I know it, it's hard, it's hard guys, and we're so sorry. <laughs> but uh yes, we're not professionals in anything we do. I'm not professional audio. Tyler's a professional troll, I'm a professional idiot, and Anthony is a professional cop actually, so that's good for him. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So Anthony, you want to take the get permission? <laughs> you want to take that get permission? Uh, yeah. So disclaimer. even though we may not be visiting these places, uh, these places are obviously real and they are out there. And if you'd like to investigate them, get permission first. Okay. When we do go to places and invest, we obviously contact the law enforcement. Uh, we contact the people that own the property first and get their uh, permission to be able to do what we love to do and share it with you guys. Uh, because obviously I am a law enforcement officer and I do not condone trespassing. And if you say the haunting table told you that you could go wherever you want to. Pound you sand, buddy. Fuck right <laughs> off. You can fuck right off. <laughs> so, but no, we just want people to not get arrested. We want people to respect other people's property. And uh, yeah, that's going to conclude this one. Yep, get permission. Hey. Tyler, be respectful. And, and lastly, yep, be respectful. Be respectful of the building you're in, of the ghosts, um, any if you know, any murders, anything that happened at these places, the victims, of their families, all that stuff. Just be respectful of everything. Um We are. We know, we we're respectful for what we yeah. talk about, yeah. Yeah. We we try we try our best. Obviously we make jokes and stuff, but at the end of the day, not trying to you know make fun of or anything of anything that happened because yeah. some of the stories that we've told have been pretty uh pretty messed up pretty so, dark yeah um but yep be respectful everyone always yep and we try our best not to denigrate any of the families or the victims of the families we just tell the stories how they are we joke about stories in general and stupidity behind you know some of this the stupidity in the story but we don't we try not to denigrate any of the victims or victims families so now that that's out of the way I guess I can test out my little transition I made here for Tyler. So now that that the disclaimers are out of the way, Tyler, where are we today? <laughs> we are in. Uh, I said it last time. I'm gonna do it again. We're in our homes. Um, don't yeah. care. I'm gonna nice. Keep saying Good it. joke, dude. But, Good joke. Uh, nope. So we you landed. Are, I know. Yep. It landed the first time. It's gonna keep landing. I'm gonna keep saying it. I don't awesome. Care. Anyway, uh, so Coral Gables, it is in Florida, right by um, Miami. It's uh, so like South Florida. Um, this was a, I guess it was one of the first planned cities down in that area. Um, its planning was based, let me move this a little bit. So its planning was based on a popular early 20th century movement uh, called the City Beautiful Movement. I don't know why it's city beautiful, but that because was city was. beautiful, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that was that was Duh. the uh, thing that was running in my head the entire time. Ah, city beautiful, yes, yes. Because but, uh, city yeah. beautiful, exactly. But 
anyway makes sense that was, yeah uh-huh it really does not anyway um it's I guess it's infamous for its strict zoning regulations. Um, it was developed by George Merrick during the Florida land boom. Um, it just said early, so it'd be like, uh, it said early 20th century. Like I said, it didn't give me an exact year when it was made or like founded or anything like that. But uh, its architecture is almost entirely like mediterranean style i guess are you talking about the town or the hotel no the town oh, so okay. just a lot of the architecture there is mediterranean gotcha. style based so um <clears throat> and i guess apparently that was the original plan was to have it all in that same style um including the uh congregation church the original church that was there which uh was made or donated however they worded it by Merrick himself um the catholic church of the little flower was built somewhat later in a a spanish renaissance style apparently they're all about style down here i guess because they brought up the fact that these are all designed in these different styles and stuff a lot so yeah the uh by 1926 the city had covered 10,000 acres i guess and it netted, mm. apparently it said it netted $150 million in sales uh, with over $100 million spent in development of this whole town. So, yeah, that's a lot of money. Don't know what it would have been down like back in, you know, 1926. Don't have that conversion, but uh, yeah. yeah, nowadays it would have been a lot of money. I bet. Um, <laughs> yeah. He, uh, I so mean, Mary- look at the pictures of it. It's pretty crazy. It looks pretty cool. It, it looks like it, it, it looks like it'd be a Dubai almost. Right. It, there, there's, I mean, even like the hotel that we're talking about is beautiful. Great looking. Like, yeah, yeah. Dude, it's like beautifully made. Um, but Merrick, he meticulously designed the downtown commercial district to be only four blocks wide um, and no, no longer than two miles. So, he wanted that so that pretty much just so that everything was within like walking distance, essentially. Right. Um, they had that. And then they also wanted to make use of their trolley system, their electric trolley system. But obviously that was replaced by cars and all that stuff. Um, I think it said that the trolley is still there running through the city. I'm not sure. Um, I guess it's free now. used to cost money, but obviously, like I said, now it's free. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. San Francisco vibe. For free. Um, I mean, I'm always for anything free. Right. I mean. I'm a baller on a budget. Hell yeah. (laughs) Yep. Exactly. (laughs) Minus the baller. I'm just on a budget. I'm not a baller. My, yeah, that's, point. that's what I was trying to say. I'm not yeah. a baller. And yeah, you are. Baller, right? I, I dabble. He dabbles in a ballery? I, I dabble in ballery. I, I dabble. <laughs> I'm a ballery dabbler. <laughs> um, in around the same time of like 1925, 26, the construction of the University of Miami was construct. It was made on 200 and 40 acres of land just west of U.S. Route 2 that was two miles south of downtown Coral Gate. I believe that's the U, right, Jay? The Miami Hurricanes, right? Yeah. 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 The the, the green and orange? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the uh, first class of students, which was 372 students enrolled um, by the fall of 1926. So, um, it's kind of neat. Yeah. I didn't know when that was actually founded, but 1926, apparently. And it seems like a lot of students for the time, I believe. Yeah, it's, that's quite a bit, actually. Yeah. So, there were a... Um, during World War II, I guess there was a whole bunch of uh, Navy pilots and mechanics that were trained um, and housed in Coral Gables. Um, it is known 
currently today as the fine dining capital of South Florida. Okay. Yep. Honestly, so, look at this. This looks like a cool place. I, I would really love to go check this place out. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's really neat. It's I, like, I th- like I said, every building in there is just beautiful looking. Yeah. Almost. Like, yeah. Linda, whole- the person I interviewed said it was like one of the richest areas around like Miami. Like it was crazy. And it's yeah. a town that's like not old at all. Normally, when we tell these yeah. histories, it's like early settlers. You know, they they traveled and found this. This this place came was was built what in like the early twenties, nineteen twenties. That's crazy. Yeah, so like, uh, it's not old yeah, at all. It's not an old town at all. Yeah, like early nineteen hundreds. So at worst, it's a hundred and twenty something years old. Hundred years to hundred and twenty something years old. Like that's crazy. Yeah, that um, I mean, it'd be less than a hundred years old if anything. Because yeah. we're, ju- we're just yeah, now twenty twenty. Yeah, so, so, so I got some. Uh, you you mentioned the Spanish Renaissance, um, yeah. the way that so pretty much I have the architecture the way that is, what it talks about and stuff like that. If you guys would like to hear it, what right do you mean? Uh, the Renaissance style began in Spanish architecture as a plateresque. It was a transition between Gothic and Renaissance, and de- decoration was a combination of Moorish gothic and renaissance elements uh yeah so there was most structures are designed for hot weather they have small windows flat or low pitched roofs and patios and uh very kind of classical style with marked by gray granite and white stucco so you got wood was scarce so you got more marble and that kind of stuff so um and then also you mentioned the florida land boom in the 1920s i did some research Mm -hmmm. on that real quick so the first one was uh, just like yeah, uh, design uh, history dot com, and this one is just Wikipedia. The Florida land boom of the nineteen twenties was Florida's first real estate bubble, which burst in nineteen twenty five. The land boom left behind an entire new cities such as Coral Gables, uh, Hoya, Miami Springs, Opelika, and Miami Shores. So it was a and Hollywood is a land boom, a gigantic real estate bubble. So it kind of you know people started nabbing stuff up quick there, which was ended in nineteen twenty six due to the Miami hurricane. Correct. Mm. It, I guess after the land boom shaped up, like uh, there were entire failed development projects such oh, as Aladdin it. City. So the entire cities just uh, kind of went bankrupt and think, were just left there. To be honest, I think maybe it was good that Aladdin City stopped its development because today it might be a little offensive. <laughs> People might see that as a little <laughs> as maybe a little offensive. So, um, but yeah, go ahead and continue, Tyler. Uh, so, like I was saying before, it's a very um, kind of pedestrian friendly. Everything's trying to be within walking distance. They don't want to make this place very big. Right. Um, it's so located four miles from the uh, the international airport. There's around 140 dining establishments and like gourmet shops um, and a lot of no, like notable retailers, like clothing and that kind of stuff. Uh, some of them actually are international too. So there's a bunch of overseas shops here right. in town because of how just, I, I, I would guess just how, how great it is. Yeah. I well, know. I mean, Florida has a lot of that just cause it's on the water. It's surrounded by water. <laughs> so it's easier for, you know, ships to get to more easily accessible yeah so there is um there's obviously the hotel that's one of the big landmarks here there's the venetian pool which i don't know if that was at the biltmore because they really they talk about the pool a lot and what i was saying um how awesome the pool is at this place yeah. and how big it is so I don't yeah know that, the same that's pool. at the biltmore yeah it's it a is. two olympic sized it is, pool it is. Yeah, yeah i have some uh yeah, so we'll let Jay talk about that. Yeah, yeah, no worries. But I was just saying, I do have some history about that thing. It was pretty cool stuff. Yep. Um, and then uh, the the last big kind of landmark that they had was the Douglas Entrance. I'm not sure what that. The Douglas Entrance. That sounds like uh, it's really only good for Doug. It sounds like uh, <laughs> yeah, it, Douglas's entrance only from the rear. <laughs> it's just a bunch of dogs, just like <laughs> just chilling. Hey, what's up? Just hey, uh, what's up? Just My name's Cole, Douglas. Just Dougs. <laughs> just Doug Funny and 
Dougie Doug and yeah. Dougie Fresh and all them. Yeah. So it's um so it's actually a historic site in Coral Gables. Um, it's at the junction of Douglas Road and to Miami to Mom, to yep butcher that uh, yeah, trail. Cool. Yeah. Um, nice. The architect was Phineas Paste, and it was in 1924, and it's on the National Register of Historic Places. I think a lot awesome. of it is uh, wedding venues. There's a bunch of first thing I pulled up. First four things on this is uh, hey, uh, here's the knot.com and uh, all these wedding venues, and uh, Douglas Entrance is one of those. So it's a big wedding venue place down there. Oh, okay. I guess. Cool. So, cool. 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 Um, last little thing I had was a few notable people that were born here so you got and some of these people i don't know and some of them we're gonna not get into because there's a stupid politician in here maybe not stupid but <laughs> jesus christ all right cool sounds good <laughs> so, so we got uh, zach banks he's a race car driver racing driver um okay. columba bush the former first lady of florida jeb bush <laughs> <laughs> i think everybody's on the same page about that continue <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, Maxine Clark, who is the founder of Build a Bear. Oh, uh, okay. Dane, Dane Johnson was a former professional pitcher for the White Sox, Blue Jays, and uh, Athletics. Dane Johnson. Dane. Yeah. Okay. What I said. Not to be no, confused no, what, with Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Not Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Right. <laughs> Dane. The, you did. Say, you did say that. I was just making sure I, yeah. you cut out a little bit. Um, there is uh, Thurston Moore, who is a the singer uh, or the songwriter and guitarist, I believe, for Sonic Youth. Uh, Kelly Parsons was a former actress and a Mouseketeer. Mimi Rogers was an actress. Roy Sekoff was the founding editor of the Huffington Post. And then uh, the last big one that I had here was Jonathan Vilma, who was a football player for the Saints and the Jets. He was a yep. linebacker, I believe. Yep. Cool. Um... Also, apparently, Marilyn uh, Million, who was the judge of the People's Court, lived here for a long time. So you got wow. that. That's a that's a good one there. No dun, judge Judy. Dun, dun. Marilyn Million, <laughs> People's Court. Awesome. Cool. So cool. that is the history of the town that I fumbled through of Coral Gables. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you for that. <laughs> that's the end. <laughs> the end of it. <laughs> I gotta fix that. I mean, that's just such a shitty. I mean, it sounds good, but the it's end so kind of cuts a little bit. But whatever. I mean, I did this. I did this all on the fly. Thanks, Ableton. Love you. All right. But anyway, <laughs> now that we know where we are, what are we in? <laughs> well, we are in the Miami Coral Gables Baltimore Hotel, uh, oh, and it was Biltmore. Biltmore. Biltmore? Baltimore. Did I say Baltimore? You said Baltimore. We are in the Miami <laughs> Biltmore Hotel. <laughs> All right, so a little bit of back history on this building is in 1925, the land developer George E. Merrick, which is, you know, the creator or founder of Coral Gables, Florida, joined forces with Baltimore Hotel Magnete. It's got to be some sort of French word, M-A-G-N-A-T-E. Magnete. Men Sure. <laughs> but he joined forces. Uh, Georgie Mary joined forces with John McEnty Bowman at the height of the Florida land boom to build a, quote, great hotel, which would not only serve as a host hostelry, hostelry, man, these people spoke so weird, which would not only serve as a hostelry to the crowds, which were thronging, which I mean, which I think means thronging. Flocking to the coral to Coral Gables, but also would serve as a center of sports and fashion. End quote. In January 1926. Now, just to let everybody know, I am just kind of reading this from the Wikipedia page. There's a lot of cited sources here, so this is the best place for me to be able to read kind of a syn like a synopsis of its history. You can of, read. I'm I'm having it read to me in my ear from uh, Google Assistant. But he's, he's got someone signing it off camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's, I mean, I'm blind, so I wouldn't be able to see in sign language. But anyway, <laughs> um, in January 1926, 10 months and $10 million later, this is in the, early, the, the late 20s, 1920s, $10 million in the late 1920s. That is so much fucking money. 
Can't even count that high. I'm looking it up right now. The 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 exchange whatever the the inflation rate. Yeah, yeah, I'll get it to you do, when, do, I, do, when do. I find okay. it. The hotel debuted with a magnificent inaugural that brought people from you know northern cities uh, on trains marked Miami Baltimore special Baltimore special. Now, that's not a site. That's not a cited name, but it's just it's speculated that there were trains marked with the Miami Baltimore special where it would bring people from. Um, visitors included uh, quite a bit. The the Duke, which editor Edward the Eighth, I believe, um, was king of the United Kingdom and the dominions of the British Empire back then. Uh, the Duchess of Windsor, so the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, Ginger Rogers, Judy Garland, which is an actress, obviously. Uh, Bing Crosby, and of course, why not Al Capone? He was fucking everywhere. This guy was everywhere. It's fucking gay. It's fucking gay. It's fucking gay. Uh, but of course, and then there was you know assorted Roosevelts and Vanderbilts, all the rich, <laughs> famous, lotty, fucking dotty people uh, as frequent Bro. guests. Uh, even so, yeah, hoity, hoity motherfuckers, <laughs> the hoity toity ass bitches. <laughs> but even Franklin Delano Roosevelt had a temporary White House office set up at the hotel when he vacationed in Miami. That's pretty crazy. That is uh, cool. Yeah. There that were, place was popping. <clears throat> it sounds and like it. Speaking of popping, I have the uh, amount popped up on my desktop. Okay, so transition. $10 million <laughs> from the early. Equates to 130 million, $194,000. So like. That's a lot of money One, for a hotel. Yeah, so just uh, pretty much $130 million. Jesus. Creepers, creepers. I mean, hotels nowadays cost a lot more than that yeah. if they're nice cities. Yeah, true. But, yeah, if this, if this hotel was built now, it probably would be twice built. as much as that. Yeah, I'd say close to, I guess close to at least a three quarters of a billion or something. Maybe around that. a billion dollars. Right. Worth a billion. Um, but there were many gala balls and aquatic shows by the Grand Pool. Uh, it was an elegant venue for weddings and world-class golf tournaments, of course. Um, but just months after, only months after the hotel opened on September 18th, the 1926 Miami hurricane struck. While the hotel was undamaged, pretty much, it was, I mean, it was it survived. It was relatively un, unhurt. Uh, it actually provided as a shelter for people so over 2,000 survivors sheltered there uh, and then of course the hurricane signaled the end of the Florida land boom so do you uh, have the like uh, how bad of the hurricane that was I just never I've never heard of it um yeah so it was the 1926 Miami hurricane commonly called the great Miami hurricane was a large and intense tropical cyclone that devastated the greater Miami area and caused extensive damage in the Bahamas and the U S Gulf coast in 1926. Huh. Um, so a little bit more history on, on the hotel Merrick's, uh, Coral Gables. So his town company declared bankruptcy on April 13th, 1929 and Merrick's stake in the hotel was bought out by his partner, which was, his the the one that helped make him build it, John McKenty Bowman, and that was in 1929, and he bought his share out for 2.1 million million dollars, 2.1 million dollars, which is Bunch a of money. decent chunk. Uh, but Bowman resold the hotel in 1931, September 1931, to millionaire Henry Letham Doherty. Um, he's just in. Irish American financer and oilman. The hotel made it through the early 1930s by hosting aquatic galas. As many of as many as 3,000 people would come out on a Sunday afternoon to watch the synchronized swimmers, bathing beauties, and alligator wrestling. That's so Florida. That's what yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah, alligator wrestling. That's Fuck. so Florida, dude. <laughs> you don't get any more Florida than alligator Jeez. wrestling. Um, we can get away with anything. Like, yeah, it's true. Any, anyone that's ever seen any news article in Florida of Florida man dot dot dot. Just leave it at Florida man. It. Yeah, just leave it at fucking Florida man. Yeah, and uh, just uh, had to fun facts for that Miami hurricane. The highest winds were 150 miles per hour. 
Uh, if that hurricane would have hit around 2018, around this time, it would have caused $235 billion worth of damage. And sadly, 372 people between 539 people lost their lives. So it was a crazy hurricane and nice. why it shut down the Florida land boom. Boom. <laughs> Fun give, facts. Give Anthony a computer on a podcast. <laughs> give Anthony a computer on a podcast. He just sits here. He just sits here and looks fact. everything up that we say. Dude, these are things that I'm like actually curious about. Like I'm only looking up things that I'm wondering like, huh, I wonder how bad that hurricane was. It was shitty. It was not it was a shitty. good time. Yeah, some some say that it would uh that it even ended the Florida land boom. So it had to have done something <laughs> terrible if the you know the Florida land boom was freaking Bro, the, ended because of it. The Florida land boom just ended because of this hurricane. It was so bad. Yeah, no, dude, freaking yeah. the Great Miami Hurricane. What a dick. What a dick. In 1926, ended the Florida land boom. Signaled the end. Dude, it would have caused like billions of dollars in damage. Did you know that? Yeah, today yeah, if it happened today. Yeah, but, like 235 billion. That's wild. <laughs> it, was that was that called the, the the Great Miami Hurricane? Yeah, back in 1926. Yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. I heard that it signaled the, floor, the end of the floor. Of right. If we All fucking right. roll through this cycle one more time, I'm just going to leave this goddamn this <laughs> All right. All right. Anyway, where was I? So uh, with these <laughs> back to the pool and, and the the aquatic Damn. galas, Johnny Weiss, Weiss Muller, Weiss Muller. He was an Austro-Hungarian born American competitive swimmer that has set a bunch of world records well at the time and it's kind of uh it's it's rumored that before he became known as the actor that played Tarzan because that's what he did that was one of the main things that he was known for uh he was in the movie Tarzan the original he was he's the one that played Tarzan he they say that there were some records that he broke in that pool but there's no like cited information about that there's no way to prove it it's just a rumor um but with the onset of World War II, the War Department took over the hotel, converting it into a 1,200-bed hospital in November 1942. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if it was, like, commandeered or if they volunteered it up. I, don't I know. bet it was probably a little bit of both, more so the commandeering, I'd say. <laughs> I would guess it was commandeared. <laughs> yeah. They, but, yeah. but they put it in the news as, like, oh, yeah, so they just let us have this as, like, right. a gesture. Totally. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure they would. I mean, for the most part. Uh, especially yeah. there, because there's a lot of money, a lot of famous people going there. They they wouldn't let them, you know, besmirch the name like that. Yeah, but uh, that, always, that always looks good on the name. Yeah, so sure. that was in 1942. The building was uh, transferred to the army in 1946 and renamed Pratt General Hospital. So it was actually turned into a hospital. Yep. Many of the windows were sealed with concrete, and the marble floors covered with government issue linoleum they are God, fucking, fucking ruining uh, this hotel dude dude they're ruining this place jesus christ i was gonna make a really bad joke but i'm not gonna do it do it i'm, I'm gonna that's what a podcast it. is is do really it. bad jokes do, do, it. do it the united states government has done a lot of atrocities but that one might be up there <laughs> wow <laughs> i'm just kidding what? i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> Is it though? <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. Anyway, the hospital was transformed from uh, the army to the veteran, the VA administration, veteran, veterans administration in July 1947. Also, the early site of the University of Miami School of Medicine, Pratt General Hospital remained a VA hospital with 450 beds until a newer facility opened nearby in May 1968, and the building was vacated. So for a long time there a long time uh 20 years almost it was used as a hospital so it started Can being used as a hospital in the in 42 and it was that way until 1968 when it was vacated can you imagine having something so beautiful as like that hotel and then like staying there and then all of a sudden it's just abandoned and it's right. probably honestly like looks like shit now because let's be real like look the look of a hospital is a little less important than what's on the inside and like right. the type of <laughs> equipment like, can you imagine and stuff that and... you're at a hospital you get sent to a hospital and like because you had your legs blown off in the war and you're looking out of your window and you're like that is a huge fucking pool <laughs> like, why is yeah <laughs> <laughs> that is an olympic grade pool down there. <laughs> this guy's got no legs and one arm and he's like fuck 
I wonder if I, they still treated the pool. I wonder if they still took care of it, or if they're just like. I bet it was emptied. Yeah, I guarantee. If I had to guess, it was fucking empty. They're like, we don't give a fuck about this pool. We don't need this. <laughs> or they biggest did. pool in the world, <laughs> literally yeah. biggest yeah. <laughs> biggest pool in the world. Just nah, they did. They, it. No, Drain it wasn't empty. It was filled just with bodies. All right. Uh, um, let's say. So let's uh, move on. In 1973, through the historic monuments act. A legacy of parks program, the city of Coral Gables was granted ownership and control of the building. The building remained unoccupied for almost 10 years. Then, in 1983, the city oversaw its full restoration to be opened as a grand hotel. It was reopened on December 31st, 1987 as the first as a first-class hotel and resort. In June 1992, though, the year I was born, a multinational consortium, yeah. What, uh, what what year were you born, Tyler? Was it like 1985, 1984, 1982? Yeah. Dude, that face says 1980 for being fucking real. <laughs> if we're being 100% honest here, that face looks like 1976. It's been ridden hard and put away wet. <laughs> I look like I'm from the Great Depression. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or, or you're in a Great my, Depression, one of the that's, two. That's, 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 that's just my depression right He's now. He's been in the Great Dust Bowl. He's just surviving out there in Oklahoma. Just living. Every, every time that I fart, I have to change my fucking drawers because it's just <laughs> fucking dust comes out. Oh, you just shake them out. You just take them off and go, and then you put them back on. Go. <laughs> yeah, just one. It looks like you're shaking out a dirty, dirty uh, rug. From your right. living room. Exactly. <laughs> just, <laughs> just beating them. Uh, in June 1992, a multinational consortium led by Seaway Hotels Corporation became the new operators of the hotel under a long-term management lease with the city of Coral Gables and again made significant refurbishments to the property. New lighting and telephone systems repaired the pool, furnishings, and a complete guest room renovation program and spa were completed. In February 2009, the hotel opened a culinary academy, the Baltimore Culinary Academy. And that Baltimore? Was, I, I keep putting an A there. I don't know why. The Baltimore Culinary Academy is a recreational hands-on cooking school with classes for adults and children taught by the hotel chef. On April 18th, 2012, the AIA, which is the American Institute of Architects, Florida. Anthony, just, Anthony, it, just say it. It's Biltmore. It, it, you're you're saying Baltimore, which is making why it's getting confused with Baltimore. <laughs> it, it's Jesus built. Christ, guys! <laughs> I was like thinking in my head, like it's how I can see on my face. I'm like, what the yeah. fuck? I'm having a hard time. Anthony, Anthony, Anthony <laughs> that it was the funniest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> so I'm having a hard like, time, guys. Wait. <laughs> I'm having a hard time. All right, the it's built okay. built more culinary academy, built more motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, April eighteenth, two thousand twelve, the AIA's Florida chapter placed the building on its list of Florida architecture hundred years hundred places. The hotel is on a list of supposedly haunted locations too, due to the mobster Thomas Fatty Walsh being killed while staying in the hotel. <laughs> The hotel has been used as a setting in various movies, television programs such as Bad Boys, The Specialist, Shockwaves, CSA, CSI Miami, uh, Poppy. That's a singer. Mm, Poppy is oh. a 1960 American comedy drama film. Oh, that's was. And then, <laughs> yeah, the there was <laughs> television and movies such as A Singer. <laughs> Oh, that one? A hey, singer? <laughs> Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah, then also it. Miami Vice. But yeah, that's a little okay. bit of the history on the building and, and how you know how it came to be what it is. It sounds super cool. I looked up some pictures and it looks super it looks interesting. Awesome. Even modern. I, uh, it, I'm i looking at the prices and it's $250 a night. <laughs> that's not bad for like I mean, a really it, nice place. And I mean, resort. yeah, but I mean, who... I'm not spending two hundred and fifty dollars a night. I'll sleep in my car at that point. Hey, it was listed as a first class hotel, Anthony. Are you first class? The answer is no. I'm a baller on a no. budget. <laughs> the answer is no. I, you don't need, I don't have to wait for you to answer. The answer is no, Anthony. <laughs> we will. That's what we're striving for. We're striving for first class. We're striving. Get us there. Uh, I'm, ghoul squad, I'm, ghost squad, whatever, whatever we named it's you. Ghost I can't squad. Ghost, ghost squad. Ghost squad. Yeah. Our fellow no. ghost squad mates. 
My fellow ghost squadians. Squad. You should have ghost squad. Squad. You should have. That was bad. Keep going. Um, but yeah, so now we're going to get into a little bit of the story of what makes this building haunted, which is Thomas Fatty Walsh. And uh, I guess we'll just get into like the, the whole story of him. It's it's kind of a long story. It should be interesting. So stop me whenever you want to talk about, about something, jump in whenever. But it's it cool. seems it's pretty interesting. I read the first half, but not the last half because I want to be I want to read it along with you guys. Nice. So. I'm just reading it from the mobmuseum.org website where they have uh, everything here is pretty much cited and listed out. I mean, I did my own research to find all these things and everything that I found all kind of led back to here. So if anything is incorrect about this story, feel free to reach out. That'd be cool. I'd, I'd like to get to know what the actual story is if you know anything that this website does not. But as far as my research goes, this had everything in it. So anyway, the setting was a suite on the 14th floor of the lavish Biltmore Hotel in Coral Gables, Florida. Thomas Walsh, the former bodyguard for the late Arnold the Big Bankroll Rothstein, and Arthur L. Clark, allegedly member of the Jack Legs Diamond Gang. All these people have weird fucking nicknames. Dude, I, like, that would be my name. Like, <laughs> it, it, would be, it would be Anthony Legs, like, no, I'm a 45%. It'd be, it, it'd be Anthony Cheeks. <laughs> That's what it would be. Sweet Cheeks McGee. <laughs> it, it'd be Anthony <laughs> Anthony Cakes Adamson. That's what your yeah, name I, would be. I'm, I'm not going to lie. That's, <laughs> That's what it would be. Anthony Cakes Anthony Thick Cakes, Cakes Adamson. Adamson. <laughs> 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 uh, I got a booty. I got a booty. That's what they're trying to reference for people. You got that there. Madonga dong, boy. <laughs> so, yeah, he was, a, he was a bodyguard in that gang, the Jack's Legs Diamond Gang, where among the gamblers, gangsters, and showgirls having a grand time playing games of chance in on the 14th floor. The entire floor was an illicit gambling den frequented by underworld high rollers. But it had not been subject to any overt violence until the early morning hours of March 7th, 1929. Then, after exchange of words, multiple gunshots rang out and blood spilled upon the green baize bridge floors. Or tables, sorry. Which I'm assuming is the gambling tables, like the green carpet on like, the gambling tables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but attendees fled as law enforcement rushed in to find two men down, one dead, and the other wounded. A few patrons evaded apprehension while police hauled others to the headquarters for questioning. Nobody volunteered much info, leaving investigators scrambling to ID the deceased. So, um, okay. So, <laughs> I mean, the gunshots, everybody ran around, freaking everybody out. And then, so, I don't know Nobody. why they had a hard time IDing the deceased. Yeah. No yeah, ID? I don't know. Nah, uh, really yeah, maybe nobody talked. Like you know, especially when you're dealing with gang or mob stuff, maybe they just were like, yeah, that and, they and didn't want. I doubt he had an ID on him. Like, yeah, I'm in a gang, and this is my actual legal name. Right. He's got a gang card. Like it's just like a little ID <laughs> card. This, I'm affiliated with so and so, and this is it's my like street a, name. It's, it's like a whole punch card or something. Yeah. Like every yeah. Affili yeah. affiliation. Like, uh, Jack it's literally Lakes, like Diamond a blockbuster gang. card, just written on the. <laughs> Little scar got, like punch. six patches and the or six six <laughs> little punches and the the seventh gang is free. <laughs> every every time you do some a little sketch, they just punch a hole in it. Hell yeah, fucking that's the way they did it back in the day, you know. Seventh Obviously. seventh uh, punch is is a, a free latte. Um, a search for the dead man's clothing. A search of a search of the dead man's clothing revealed a sewn in tag. Naked? <laughs> right. Yeah, right. They're searching for his clothes. Where's the fun? Why is this guy naked? <laughs> what happened to his clothes? Where's his clothes? But no, they searched through his clothes. They, re they revealed a sonin tag that read Tom Walsh. To validate the victim uh, was was indeed the notorious New York mobster Thomas Fetty Walsh. Police brought Arthur Chick Clark to provide a positive identification. They all have these stupid one syllable ass names. And they're all dumb. And I know they all have a whatever. They got those nicknames for whatever reason. But when you think about it now, that's such a stupid fucking nickname. Chick. Yo, what up, Chick? Please don't call me that. Please just call just call me Arthur. Please don't call me Chick. That'd be just stupid. Just, just go by my first name. It's Jeremiah. Jesus. It's Jeremiah. Don't even call please. me my big. <laughs> it's Jesus. <laughs> it's Jesus. Uh, but yeah, so this Arthur Chick Clark 
who bore non-life-threatening gunshots uh, to the arm and chest was present during the melee, which there was guns, so I'm going to assume that it's not a melee. If I'm incorrect, please correct me, but a melee, I feel like, is not with guns. Maybe it was just a bunch of everything. Maybe people were beating the shit out of each other. All of a sudden, somebody pulls a gun out. Then like, boom. Uh, so what do we call this? Are we calling this a melee, or are we calling it? A, are we calling it a shooting? Oh, they gotta stop mid fight. Oh, <laughs> no longer melee. Okay, <laughs> I'm out. To, for the record, everyone get the pistols out. <laughs> for the record, this, I just want to let everybody know we are not labeling this a melee. There was a gunshot. <laughs> All right, continue. Is, <laughs> right, it is now a gunfight. All right, continue. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but I only shot twice. All right, all right, we'll, we'll go with melee. Fine, whatever. Uh, nonetheless, he remained hesitant to divulge much uh, information beyond a positive ID of Walsh. At one point, he said he believed the shooters had targeted Walsh, only to later claim that he didn't know anything about I don't know anything about it. And you won't get nothing oh, from me. I don't think they were even shooting for Fatty at all. By daylight, the authorities had a jail cell full of alleged witnesses. The victims' identities... Uh, the victim's identity, but little else in terms of evidence. So they had witnesses. They knew who the dead guy was, but nobody was talking. Have so, you seen a picture of Fatty? Uh, yeah, I did. He's fat. It, okay, I was going to ask. <laughs> is it, was he big boned or not? <laughs> I mean, he's not. He, I wouldn't say he's fat, but he's definitely not skinny. Was his face kind of chubby? Oh, yeah. He's got, he's, got, he's got a little chubby boy face. Okay, gotcha. Cool. Like he's, yeah, he's, like, he's, he's, he's looking he's, like a meatloaf. Looks like he eats a lot of Master Choli. I fucking lasagna, like, Master Choli. Okay. He, he looks like thick pasta. I was wondering where the, the fatty came from, and you answered that, so I appreciate yeah, you. They're super creative. Yeah. I call, I call, hey, this is, this is Garrett Hair Wallings. Why do you call him hair? Because he's got that's, fucking hair. <laughs> that's that's Tyler Glasses Corelli. All right, Carolini, we, dude. It's, yeah, it's Tyler Glasses Carolini. 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 Figure Adamson. <laughs> I, wait, I didn't hear what you called me. I think I talked over it. Backward, ha backward oh. hat woods. <laughs> and it's Anthony wears headphones sometimes. Anthony Adamson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so anyways, Anthony, Anthony look at those big ass fucking teeth, Adamson. Jesus, those big, <laughs> those big, those big white chompers, pearly whites, those beautiful um, pearly light whites. Oh, thanks, guys. All right, Damn. moving on. Uh, moving no, on. No, no, no. Let's keep doing this. So, who, so who was Thomas Walsh? Uh, from New York City to Miami, the boisterous, burly, and abrasive mobster ran a lot of alliteration there. Uh, mobster ran with notorious Diamond Brothers gang, protected the infamous financier Arnold Rothstein, uh, and liked to shoot dice with a soon-to-be-crowded mob kingpin, Charles Lucky Luciano. Which hmm, I wonder why his name was Lucky. Please tell me he's dead. Uh, I'm, I'm going to assume they're all dead. This was a Not, long time well, ago. Well, no, I mean, like, never mind. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> Walsh rubbed elbows. I was, I was elbows. thinking he was one of the ones that was getting shot. That's where, it, like, in this thing. I, yeah, never mind. Swing and a miss. And yeah, <laughs> I, I, I did state in the beginning who was shot and who, but it's cool. You know, uh, I wasn't listening. Uh, that's fair enough. Uh, Neither anyway. is our viewers at this point. <laughs> Walsh okay. rubbed elbows with many of the up and coming gang lord, gangland gods, whatever that means, and has eight previous arrests since 1914 with only two convictions. Uh, earned him quite a reputation with the both with both underworld and law enforcement circles. He often vacationed and held interest in the balmy palm tree adorned southern regions, not to mention Cuba and other islands from which uh, bootlegged liquor shipments flowed. So I enjoy some southern regions myself. Hmm? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if that no? if you just like warm climates or if. Uh, we're, we're doing eat ass. some what, what is, it? Huh? is it warm climates or do you eat ass? Which one is it, man? <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> yeah, it's eat ass. Uh, Walsh had his hands into everything from booze to dope, uh, but his association with Arnold Rothstein gave rise to his notoriety. No notoriety. <laughs> Questioned by police along with Luciano and George Ufner, Ufner about the November 6, 1928 murder of Rothstein, Walsh denied any involvement. He empathetically stated that he quit working for 
uh, Rothstein months before because Rothstein was too fucking cheap. He w- he wouldn't pay his bills. It's, and now he's dead. Quote. It's in a quote. Whenever I talk with that kind of AXC, Rothstein was too cheap. He wouldn't pay his bills. That's a, it's a quote. So, so just future yeah. reference. <laughs> if that's and offensive to anybody him, out probably. there, if that's offensive to anybody out there, meh. Uh, as with the slaying of Rothstein... Police never truly solved Walsh's murder. So Rothstein was never solved and Walsh's murder was never solved, which uh, included a few of the same mysterious characters. So police departments working jointly began uh, piecing together the puzzle of Walsh's murder. But every clue or suspect that materialized seemed to add to the mystery and possible theories. Several suspects received particular attention, including gamblers William Wallace and Burt Griffith, these are such generic ass names too. Is it just me or do these sound? Are, f- they they sound- went to mobster gen- name generator on Google <laughs> yeah, and right. they started <laughs> generating anything they could. William Bert- Wallace and Burt <laughs> Griffith. Okay. Uh, but the primary person of interest was the man who operated the gambling suite where the murder occurred. Eddie, Eddie Wilson. Now they're not showing any nicknames right now, but whatever. Uh, word circulated that Wilson had fled to Cuba and that the actual shooter was a hitman known as Potatoes Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Potatoes Joe. <laughs> Pota- hey, Potato Joe. <laughs> His name was Joe P- P- uh, Pitio. I-, I Obviously, it's Italian. I can't. Th- it's P-I-T-E-O. Uh, Pesho, maybe. Pesho. I don't know. But, uh, but his nickname is Potatoes. Potatoes. Potatoes, potatoes <laughs> dude, Joe. Dude, get the. F- <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Hey, potatoes hey. Joe. Joe French Fry Potatio. <laughs> what are you doing? Hey, it's fucking potatoes, Joe. Uh, hey, I like potatoes, okay? You fucking get off my back. Potatoes, tomatoes, you know? It's... <laughs> I fucking love whatever, no. man. Potatoes. You can, there's so many ways to cook them. Um, but also rumored to have escaped to Cuba. So, potatoes, Joe, along with Wilson, who was, you know, thought to be the killer were rumored to have both fled to Cuba. Maybe together, maybe not. Maybe they were lovers. Who knows? It's all speculation at this point. Even Al Capone's name arose in the early stages of the investigation, adding to the spectacle. The day after Walsh's murder, a lawyer named Fred Pine burst into the county jail, requesting the names of all the people in custody. When police asked what incident he was referring to, Pine elusively replied, I'm here for anyone you got, and I want to see him. You couldn't have been a little bit more tactful for that. Yeah. Everybody, I want everyone. I want them all. I want them all. He like goes. Literally, the quote is. Brothel. The quote is literally. I'm here for anyone you have got, and I want to see him. <laughs> I, I don't understand. Here for anyone. He, probably, he was so slick, bro. He been walking in there, peacock, and then <laughs> the line he dropped. I know. <laughs> it's literally. <laughs> It's literally, I'm here for anyone you have got, and I want to see him. He thought about that all night. (laughs) (laughs) He's he's, he's writing them down, and he's like, nah, crumples them up, throws them over his shoulder, misses the fucking uh, trash can and shit. He's like, nah, I didn't didn't know him. It turns out... That wasn't good. turns out Pine arrived there on a blanket assignment uh, from an anonymous client to represent anyone hauled in for the Walsh murders. So... I'm here for anyone you got. <laughs> <laughs> investigators, Give me them all. <laughs> investigators also discovered another character reportedly at the murder scene. A young New York nightclub hostess slash entertainer, you know, uh, named... <laughs> No, I don't. What do you mean? Be respectful. (laughs) Hey, I'm just saying, man. Back then, hostess entertainer. It's like, here's your table. Do you mind if I go under it real quick? The Leave professional. T- to clean the, to clean the floor. <laughs> We're making jokes. We're making jokes. Anyway, yeah. named uh, Demarius Hotsy Totsy Door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you were right. You were all right. Yeah. Okay. Her, her nickname was yeah. Hotsy Totsy. Hey, Demarius. Hotsy Totsy. Hey, You might as well be called Candy. <laughs> Hey, Hotsy Totsy, bring that fine ass over here. Potatoes, Joe wants a piece of that. (laughs) (laughs) Potatoes, Joe wants a piece of that action. Hey, hey, Potato Joe says it looks like you got a good couple of potatoes over there. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) 
He's got a keen eye for these That is the things. most unattractive way to describe somebody. You got some potatoes on you that you I got like. Good, you got some good ass potatoes on you there, girl. Like, turn around and show me the potatoes. like a stack of potatoes. Like it's just lumpy everywhere. Like, ugh. You don't want that. No. We don't want that. Anyway. It's like two big bags of potatoes. So this young lady, Demarius Hatsi Tatsi Door, was also there. Uh, cops found Door hiding out in New York. She admitted to witnessing the shooting that killed Walsh. Door claimed that the shooter, who spoke with a lift, fired the shots after Walsh teased the man of the way he spoke. Yet, Door refused to identify the man, saying that he had threatened her. At one point, she blurted, You'll get nothing out of me till you, till you kill me. What? I don't think that's uh, how this works. I mean, that's not how know. any of this works. <laughs> yeah, sure. I Gosh, get, just like, uh, okay. You'll get nothing out of me. They'll <laughs> kill me. They they will kill. It's like there's so many conjunctions oh. here and stuff. They will kill me. Gotcha. But anyway, so uh, but on March 13th, uh, but on March 13th, the New York police released a statement that Dort had named Eddie Walsh as Eddie Wilson. Man, I'm having the hardest fucking time tonight, guys. It's okay. Uh, you know, not everyone can be on their A game all the time. We'll, we'll we'll deal. Take regroup. Take a quick drink. You know, this is the holiday <laughs> season, man. This break was too long. I need to get back into like reading these. Uh, but this is obviously where I didn't proofread. I just kind of I'm just shooting from the hip from here. But um, yeah. Anyway, so she had the, the statement the police released had her naming Eddie Wilson as the shooter. <clears throat> so, yeah. There's that. But, of course, Eddie Wilson, remember, was the one we said earlier, was rumored to have fled to Cuba. Um, he was the one that ran the whole gambit down there. But she said that he was the one that did it. Um, Dor that was police, on the 14th floor? Yes. Dor told the police that Walsh owned Wilson, owed Wilson a gambling debt of $8,000, which back then, that's a fucking lot of money. Um, we got Bill Unlucky Walsh. <laughs> Bill Unlucky Fatty Walsh. <laughs> when the two men spoke while playing cards in the Biltmore suite, Walsh listened to Wilson's complaints about the debt, then mocked Wilson's lisp. The inc- this, uh, the the in c i n c e n s e d incise insist or oh well the, the aggravated wa- the aggravated Wilson shot Walsh and ran away. A rumor circulated that the corrupt local cop. Uh, facilitated Wilson's escape to Cuba, uh, the go-to spot for American criminals criminals fleeing persecution in the era. So hmm. in that era, Cuba was filled with a bunch of American mobsters. Yeah. Um, rule one, don't make fun of somebody that you owe money a ton money. of money to that is powerful. <laughs> yeah, especially and back don't make then. fun of their lisp either. Especially like, back then when there was no DNA and people got away with killing people yeah, all the time. All the time. So All the time. You know, yeah, don't yeah. be a, don't be a fucking idiot. Is basically be what respectful. Saying. Be yeah. literally what we preach. Be respectful. He'd probably yeah. still be here today. Unless you're be talking about Hatsi Tatsi, the Mary or, or damn potato Joe, <laughs> damn potato Joe, <laughs> sack of potato Joe, <laughs> sack of potato Joe. Oh my goodness. Anyway, still in the days and weeks after Walsh's death, much conjecture circulated. Two theories emerged. One connected the murder to Rothstein's murder. Uh, in New York three months earlier, and another claimed Walsh got whacked over a bootleg liquor deal gone awry. Uh, to the latter, memos of age memos from agents in Havana revealed that the recent shipment of rye whiskey aboard the schooner Trey Rays, whatever that is, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think it's just a ship name. Probably, probably yeah, a ship. Probably. Yeah. Uh, destined <clears throat> for Nassau, was stolen. And Walsh was one of the three men behind the heist. Imagine being behind a heist to steal a fucking ship. That's kind of yeah, nuts. That'd be awesome. Shout out to Black Sails, by the way. That's the only way I've ever heard of Nassau. Like that's the that show is literally the only reason why I even know where that is. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good nah, show, by the way. <laughs> sure, I'll take your word for it. Uh, soon after, an anonymous New York businessman. Uh, came forward and admitted to authorities he gave Walsh $175,000 to buy the illegal booze. But the liquor never materialized. According to news uh, reports, Walsh's gang had the shipment robbed and then resold the liquor, leaving the New Yorker out of his $175,000 investment. 
Damn. This actually sounds like it'd be it could be a really cool movie or a really cool show. Yeah. I agree. This dude, uh, Fatty, was, uh, you know, he may be screwed over a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of money to screw someone over for. $175,000. Jesus Christ. But uh, investigators also discovered another witness to Walsh's murder was none other than Rothstein's former mistress, Inez Norton. None other. I mean, we were all thinking it, right? Uh, she, along with Demarius yeah. Dorr, fled the scene before cops arrived. However, her... Uh, presence paired with rumors that Walsh himself often bragged I know all about who who was out to get AR which is that sounded rusty. super uneducated I'm just <laughs> being be honest with you the, the Can AR you re is, yeah well that was Arnold <laughs> AR of course is Arnold uh, Rothstein which is if, obviously but uh, he bragged about I know all about who was out to get AR <laughs> Okay. I know all like, about who was out to get it. <laughs> <laughs> that is so bad. Oh, I will be disrespectful on that. That's not good. <laughs> but I mean, we can we can joke about this shit. Who fucking cares? Uh, paired with rumors, so these were rumors that he often bragged that gained momentum back in New York as a clue to Fatty's murder. Uh, we have detectives in quote. We have detectives in Miami. And we know there are racketeers there, a good many of them former associates of Rastin, which, end quote, which was the police commissioner Grover Wallen said that. Wallen's remarks were vague, yet spoke volumes. Detectives had been conducting uh, reconnaissance since Walsh's arrival at his Ferdinand Street bungalow in Miami three weeks before his death. Uh, they hoped Walsh would learn to, would lead them to... <laughs> Jaime Miller. These are such weird names that are so dead now. <laughs> Jaime. Jaime. H-Y-M-I-E. John. Ooh, I've literally fuck? never met one person named Jaime in my entire it, life. Do you think it's Haim? Or is it actually it's pronounced probably. Jaime? No, it would have Jaime. to be Jaime because Jaime. it's H-Y-M-I-E. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, but they hoped, so the, the cops that were, the detectives that were doing the reconnaissance would hope that uh, Walsh would lead them to Jaime Miller, a fugitive suspect in the Rastin murder case. So, uh, with respect to both theories, uh, an interesting an anecdote appeared in 1959 newspaper, in a 1959 newspaper column. Syndicate columnist Westbrook Pegler uh, recounted some notable memories of his late friend and colleague, Bill Willie Corum. Yes, we know Willie is a nickname for Bill. You could just say Willie, Co whatever. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna quote someone's nickname, it has to be one of these dumb, Dude. stupid ass nicknames like so, Anthony Tony Adamson. Like, yeah, right. Like why? So I, I was, I was kind of bored for a second here, and I had to look up the the best mafia nicknames, and there's some pretty good ones on here. Not, I don't know if they're on par with uh, Hotty Toddy or Potato. <laughs> potatoes but, uh, multiple not just one potato you know what? throw potato. throw a few at us why not yeah, yeah throw throw a few at us. Right. so let's see here so we got uh israel ice pick willie alderman okay John, ice pick. That kills right. people that dude kills pick. people 100 sure. i mean that I, I had to get the cool one out of the way because that's yeah. actually kind of like i mean you have willie in there you could just call him ice pick that's cool that's um fun. But there's a uh, John Johnny Sus Johnny Sus Johnny Sus <laughs> Johnny, Johnny Sus <laughs> Johnny Johnny Sausage Barbado. There's <laughs> Luigi. He be slanging. <laughs> there's Luigi Baby Shanks Menachio. Uh, <laughs> what? Baby Shanks. This no, guy just got his babies. There's no well, adult anybody, Shanks. There's Baby no, Shanks. There's baby Shanks. Tiny Shanks. Um, no, he's just killing babies. He's Lu just shanking babies. <laughs> Goo goo gaga, uh, motherfucker. Nope, nope, just stop. <laughs> nope, not, nope, we're just gonna we're keep not going to Like taking hole. candy nope. from a baby. <laughs> <laughs> There's Louie Cockeyed Lou Fredo. Yeah. yeah, we know why. Yeah, he's probably cross eyed as you got, fuck. You got, someone, someone jizzed in his eye once and now he's called How would you like that to stick? You know, I'm going to call you Louie Cockeyed. And you're like, no, please, please like, no. God, stop. And then all of a sudden it just sticks and you're just Louie Cockeyed, whatever his name is for the rest of your life on Google. Jesus. <laughs> there's there's George. <laughs> there's George Butter Ass. <laughs> <laughs> They just walk 
get out of his butter in his ass. <laughs> he's just got he's got a stick of butter in between his cheeks. <laughs> he's walking around. It's clenched. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm picturing, I'm picturing of like standing. He's like standing, like they walk in the door, and he's like this, and he goes. <laughs> and he, oh my god! And it just reminds me of like the fucking the Oreo run in Blue Mountain State where they're trying to yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight. Oh, look it up. Yeah, it's fucking uh, funny. But anyway, moving on. Oh my god! All right, but I, yes. Uh, so the other one that I got the. Uh, there was a Mr. Bread. <laughs> All right. We'll end on Mr. Bread. Yeah, we'll end on that. <laughs> but anyway, back to the story. With respect, so with those theories, uh, an interesting anecdote appeared in 1959. Newspaper column syndicate columnist Westbrook Pegler recounted some notable memories of his late friend and colleague, Bill Willie Corum, including a brief yet revealing incident in Miami in 1929 when they encountered Walsh just days before the gangster met the Grim Reaper, meaning when he died, just days before he died. Um, Corum, uh, I think that's what it's saying. Is this, what, what is this? Oh, this is a quote. Okay, I think this is a quote by... This, so this is the, the column in the newspaper. Corum and I were standing... Uh, on a canal bank in the moonlight, chatting harmlessly when shots were fired close by uh, in the darkness on the other side. There were coarse cries and commotion in the shrubbery, and suddenly the oleanders parted and a white figure shot out into space like a torpedo from the tube. Hitting the scummy water with enormous wave, the torpedo floundered heavily ashore just beneath us, and clambered up to the bank, puffing and festooned with strands of seaweed. He paused for a second to catch his footing, and Willie said with an, an enamorous tact, Hello, fat. What's new? Wait, what? <laughs> I'm really confused. What that was the f fuck was that? Bro, that's so <laughs> hard to read, and it makes no sense. Probably just because we don't know, like, their was slang back ghost? then. I'm gonna or read this he... again. I know. I'm gonna read it again. So or an alien. <laughs> this was this was this was the the column written by Westbrook Peglar, from a, he's a syndicate columnist. He wrote. I'm gonna read it again. This is in quotes. Coram and I were standing on a canal bank in the moonlight, chatting harmlessly, when shots were fired close by in the darkness on the other side. There were coarse cries, and commotion in the shrubbery, and suddenly the oleanders parted. And a white figure shot out into space like a torpedo from the tube, hitting the scummy water with an enormous wave. The torpedo floundered heavily ashore just beneath us and clambered up to the bank, puffing and festooned with strands of seaweed. He paused a second to catch his footing, and Willie said with an enamorous tact, Hello, fat. What's new? Bro, all I'm thinking of is just this is a fucking porno. <laughs> <laughs> but so so not who is what I'm confused. What I'm getting from this is Pegler and Willie were standing on a bank in the moonlight. There were gunshots, people cried. Fatty Walsh jumped out of the bushes into the water in the bank, crawled up, and then Willie, who was standing there, looked down at him and said, Hello fat, what's new? Because it was Fatty Walsh. His nickname's Fatty. Yeah. Was this before he died, or this was, was this before like the he moment? died? This was okay. before. This was just days before uh, he died. Okay. So. <laughs> oh, I still don't get it. It's, I just, it's so out of context. I'm so confused. <laughs> Can you? What is your opinion on this? What do you think happened? Like, what? What is the purpose of that? Like, right there. So it, this was just, I guess, to add more to uh, the fact that he was he was in deep with some shit going on. Uh, so. This was okay. Yeah, so the the Westbrook Pegler and Bill Willie Corum were on a bank. They heard gunshots. Fatty Walsh jumped out of the bushes into the water, crawled up, and then Willie, who was standing up there, looked <clears> down <throat> at him and get and went, "Hello, Fat. What's new?" So you you think Fats was a uh, 
was attacked, but he survived, and then they ended up got and they ended up getting him later on. Yeah. Okay, that's gotcha. what that's what it if sounds that dude like. would have just written it like that, it would be so <laughs> much easier to understand instead yeah, of things as, getting shot cool. into space out of a torpedo <laughs> like and like, a, like a t- out of a the- tube. But um, yes, yeah, so, so police issued a warrant for the arrest of Eddie Wilson in Walsh's murder, but nothing came of it. Even as detectives explored theories and vague statements from alleged witnesses, the final truth about Walsh's murder remains a mystery. A local funeral home guarded Walsh's body until someone arranged to send it back to New York for internment. Just before the handers loaded his corpse onto a train bound for Manhattan, authorities permitted potential witness Arthur Clark to offer a final farewell to Walsh at the funeral home. Quote, he was shot down like a dog, unquote. Clark groaned after viewing the corpse. He never had a chance, unquote. On March 12th, 1929, hundreds of mourners honored Walsh in a grand send-off. The local press observed that a large ensemble of criminal types and plenty of law enforcement officers attended the elaborate funeral. And that is yeah, I don't the know. unsolved mystery of <laughs> Thomas Fatty Walsh. I know the easiest way to pick out who the corrupt yeah, law no enforcement shit. people are. Like, <laughs> right? Are you Who's fucking at this stupid? Y'all ain't even trying at this point. You're just this is a dude that pays me, yo. This See, is, that's the guy that paid me. Back then, everyone knew that, though. Back then, everyone yeah. knew. Everyone oh. knew which cops were good and which cops were bad. Everybody knew it. And they knew that that's what fair. they could get away with. So what were they going to do? Just wild. I just can't imagine living in, a, in such a corrupt time. Granted, you know, obviously there's always going to be corruption in all times. Yeah, we live, in a, cor- we like- live in a currently a super corrupt uh, government. We just they're better at hiding it. <laughs> that's all it is. It's just, yeah, it's wild. Um, but I, can you imagine, like, mobsters being, like, c- celebrities, too? Like, like, people just murdering people. And then all of a sudden, they, are. they got like literally groupies just following them around. They and, were. Like, it's That's just crazy. I, it's so weird. It's so, weird, it's so weird. Yeah, yeah, it's so weird. Well, it's it, it, it's a power and money thing back then. Because yeah, like, I mean, they didn't have what we have nowadays. They, back then, they didn't have like sports like we have and and uh, things like that for people to fawn over. Not there was movies, but hardly any. This was early two thousand, uh, early nineteen twenties. So it's not like still silent, yeah, still yeah. silent films. So yeah. I mean, all you had to, you know, fawn over was the big baddie types. Yeah, it's just, I mean, you get those crazies that send like Marilyn Manson and stuff like that. Yeah, like, but it's it's funny that these gangsters like Al Capone and them, they all hung out with famous people. Like yeah. I mean, what I yeah. said, what I said from before of all the the people that would visit the hotel, uh, there was the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, Ginger Rogers was an actor, uh, Judy Garland. I mean, you guys obviously know who that is, Bing Crosby. So these people knew who Al Capone was, but they still hung out with him. Everybody <clears> knew <throat> everything, and everybody was in it some way or another. That's just the way it was yeah. back then. But yeah, so that's Just the unsolved different mystery times. of Fatty Walsh and uh, why it could possibly be haunted. And, of course, for the fact that it was a fucking hospital for a while. But, you know, this was the main story. But, uh, yeah, so I guess that, that, that sums that up. And now we're on to Anthony, which I don't have a jingle for yet. We're still thinking of what to make for him. Uh, but, Anthony, do you do you have, like, uh, did you look into the hauntings and some of the stories and things that people had that you want to go over to? before? <laughs> so I called the hotel. I called the hotel, and the hotel pretty much politely told me to f Pound off. They, sand. Pound sand. They, they, they said that we're not haunted, and then I was like, "Okay, bye." The, inter- the internet says otherwise, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, and other people that have been there say otherwise. <laughs> and then, and then I tried to like look for groups that have investigated, and there was a few. I they just didn't get back to me in time or whatnot, which is fine. Um, but uh, they, this place is like not as I mean, I feel like it's mainstream in the paranormal community, but I don't think it's readily as available as other places right. that you that we that we've talked about or maybe you yeah. hear in Travel Channel and that kind of stuff. It sounds like they so, don't want to be. They don't anymore. They did, and then they went under new management. But uh, I spoke with Linda Spitzer, um, and she was 
kind of was a story. Yeah. Do you want to go over some of the the things that people have uh, uh, reportedly witnessed there before jumping into the? Well, uh, her most interview? of hers are anecdotes of people of what they witnessed there. Okay. So she did she, did so, she go over the story of the woman that went on the elevator to the thirteenth floor? I think the elevator took him up there and stopped. Did you read? Does she go into that story? She goes a little bit into it, but not as in depth. Um. So after that, if you, I'll stop it. And if you have any more details on that story, which is weird because the murder happened on the 14th floor. So I don't know why the 13th floor, um, why that's it's weird. Obviously, that's like a, a weird number. And a lot of hotels don't even have a 13th floor. It'll go 12 to 14 just because yeah. of the uh, superstition. Superstition. Especially, especially in Chicago. Yeah, but the Biltmore does, in fact, have a 13th floor. And it's where Al Capone's suite was on. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, if you guys want, I can jump right into that interview. Uh, I didn't like, we only have one interview today just because it was tough for me to find. And like I said, the hotel declined and, uh, but sh Linda did a really good job. So I can jump yeah. into that right away if Go you guys it. want me to. Go for okay. It. So Linda Spitzer was a storyteller. Um, she, this lovely woman is approximately, I believe 80 years old and was, uh, an entertainer at the hotel for, I'm not a hundred percent like over 20 years or so. So she would actually go into the hotel when the hotel had old management and they were pretty pro paranormal as like advertisement. And then new, new people um, took over and they didn't want anything to do with the paranormal side. They felt like it was scaring people off from the hotel itself. So uh, that would explain why when I asked, they just said they declined. So, but uh, she did an amazing job. Um, she's obviously retired and enjoying life, but, uh, the first cue that I have uh, was we were. What were some of the stories that she heard about the Biltmore? Because a lot of her stories were anecdotes, were people what they explained to her, um, and she noticed that they would come up time and time again, and she would share those during her story entertainment hours, where she would dress up in nineteen twenties attire and kind of uh, do the whole um, pony show. You know what I mean? To to entertain people as they were still in, staying at the Biltmore. So. Uh, let's uh, QQQ right into that. And I was sitting there, and he showed, he took two pictures right in a row, and he showed me the picture with an orb of light on my shoulder. The next picture, you see two orbs of light. You see one moving into the other. He said a lot of times the ghosts appear. As Oops, sorry. I just want to make sure that was the right cue. And that was that was definitely a proof. One night in my audience, um, a young man came and he said he and his girlfriend were parking, uh, you know, smooching outside the Gilmore Hotel. And the hotel was under renovation, a fifty-seven million dollar renovation. And he Did she saw say they were smooching? Yes. Hell yeah. Flying out of the hotel into the sky. So we got two things of orbs. Obviously, you guys know our opinions on orbs and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I, I, I would personally, have to see personally, it. personally. Yeah, yeah, I would have to see it. I'm, I'm probably there's, more the, towards the eh, in. Yeah, than there's the, just yeah. too many things that an orb yeah. could be. It's just bugs, too dust, many. just kind of light reflections. But uh, they had orbs in the picture that she took, um, allegedly. And then orbs uh, coming straight out of the hotel and going straight up into the sky, which I think that was a, the more interesting of the two because they didn't take pictures. They just looked at it and all of a sudden this ball of energy just shot up from the Biltmore Hotel as they were smooching. Um, and we will leave Fucking. it. <laughs> I'm, bro, I'm, I'm calling it that from now on. Smooching. smooching. That is it, such so, a classic, like per, that's such a classic and like. So me and this girl to were smooching, it. right? What is what is what is Linda like? Eighty years old? Jeez, she is, and she's a wonderful lady. So sounds like it. She sounds and, great, Linda. And, we're a beautiful on. person. <laughs> And then there was no one there. Uh, she had 
this happen again in one of the cafes. The uh, cafe chef told her that uh, there, there had to be, I don't remember that whole story, so forget about that one. But the piano <laughs> lounge, the fact that he was showing up all the time, and, and then they moved the red couch out of the room, and that was the end of that. Um, the waiters even told me that when they closed up at night, there were people that seemed to be in there that weren't really in there. This kept, these stories kept happening over and over again. Um, the, the hotel, when it was under renovation, the kids used to break in. Their object was to get to the 13th floor, which has, I sent you a picture of the 13th floor, where the murder occurred of Fatty Walsh. And uh, you'll see in the scene a chandelier and a balcony. And it seems that one of the guys who ran the the illegal gambling casino got mad at his, his partner and he came down from the balcony and he shot him in front of that fireplace where I'm sending you the picture. And, um, and that man was Fatty Walsh and he died. And they cleared out all the furniture and gambling equipment by the police uh, time the police got there. All the furniture had been moved out, but there was a waitress who had hidden in there, and she told them about the murder. Now, Fatty Walsh wasn't supposed to die, and that's what ghost hunters tell me, too, when you're not supposed to die you wander around and fatty walsh has been committing all kinds of pranks they weren't dangerous but pranks especially with the original elevator in the hotel sometimes a bellman will get in and it won't go to the floor he wants to go it'll go up to the 13th floor where he doesn't want to go or sometimes somebody's staying in the 13th floor it's just the one uh hotel room with several bedrooms and it won't go up to the 13th floor at all it's only the first elevator the other two are newer elevators these stories about the kids when they got up there they saw a woman in a white dress and there had been a story about a bride who died and her feet were not touching the floor and she was in a bridal gown but her feet were way off the floor so she'd be floating. So yeah, so we got we, we we'll unpack a little bit of that. So um, so I don't know. I'm I'm guessing maybe when lore because the thirteenth is such an like unlucky number. Yeah. If he was killed on the fourteenth floor, like naturally it would just go to the thirteenth floor because it's just the way stories go. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. th- they things change through time or whatnot. Um, but for yeah, some uh, reason, I want to tell you that really quick, that story. Um, so there was a woman and her husband got on the elevator. It went to the 13th floor. They didn't, they never even clicked a button to like go to one of the floors. It just took them to the, the 13th floor. And then the doors opened. And they stayed open. They didn't close. So she gets out to like, look, mm-hmm. and then the door slams shut behind her and her husband goes back down to the first floor. So they can't get that elevator to work. They can't go to the 13th floor. They finally get to the 13th floor. They find her. She's like crying. And she said that she saw a a man trying to talk to her, like walking around. She could hear footsteps around her. She could smell cigar smoke. So she was like freaking the fuck out. And that's, 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 yeah, that's crazy. So that'd be terrifying. No, thank you. But yeah. So it sounds like that, that particular one would always go to the 13th floor, like the old elevator, um, which is, which is wild. And, um, the picture that she's going to send is supposedly the the picture of the fireplace that up here right now. Yes, uh, will be a picture a picture of uh, where Fatty was laid to rest, I guess, with gunfire. So uh, he murdered. Yeah, he was murdered. He um, was shot by potatoes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Damn, no potatoes. <laughs> um. So potatoes, kids. No. So kids would sneak up during the renovation and when it was abandoned and they would try to get up to the 13th floor and uh, they would see ghosts. They would see a woman in a bride's outfit floating because allegedly a uh, newlywed or person about to be married was died up there and she's one of the spirits that haunts the 13th floor. So 
it, it sounds like there's a lot of different uh, spirits in this hotel with it being a hotel, as we can talk about previously, a lot of people, you know, die in hotels. Uh, it's just kind of weird. Have you noticed yeah. that like uh, throughout kind of our research that we've noticed that hotels have a lot of like deaths in them, whether natural yeah. or, or suicide or murder mm-hmm. or that kind of stuff. Yep. Yeah. It's just kind of, it's weird. It's just like a weird coincidence, I guess. Um, but yeah, anything you guys want to talk about during that, uh, that first cue of no, the stories no, no. that she talked about? Just, uh, just that story I told. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then there was that piano person that was, would play on the piano and, she would see a guy in an all white suit and all of a sudden he wouldn't be there anymore. So you got kind of somebody in like an old looking suit walking around the hotel. I would guess that'd be fatty, honestly. So that's my boy. Fat. God. Maybe or God or God, you know, Morgan, maybe he Morgan likes Freeman. piano. <laughs> <laughs> then that, the second cue I have is uh, it talks about kind of the world war two soldiers that have been seen haunting the Biltmore. There's been some yeah, alleged so, people in uniform. I'd assume. Uh, <laughs> yeah. that, I mean, it was an old uh, hospital for right. World War II. Yeah. It turned into a, a VA hospital, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, this is what she had to say. Uh, kind of some, some tips or some cool things about that. disappeared is what she said so yeah, no, yeah, i'm gonna pause for a second <laughs> she sounds so excited man it's adorable she yeah. sounds so excited she, she's she really loves what she does and she really likes the paranormal side of the bill more right so. in front of her yeah. eyes she he disappeared like i can't explain it you're you're awesome linda yeah you're, so you're great so um, there's a little bit more to that but we'll talk so we had a person getting tapped on the shoulder and turned around and it was too like uh, a spirit in world war two uniform. Um, we have people like walking down halls and then disappearing. Dude. Some <sighs> If I get, ta- dude, I get tapped on the shoulder. I turn around. There's just two world war two people standing there. My soul just left my body. Like, <laughs> there's exactly. no way. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep playing. We got maybe about 30 mi- seconds left of, of this cue itself. I was like 30 minutes. Holy shit. <laughs> What the fuck was that? Dude? What was that, dude? I'm going to pause this. Hey, what the fuck yeah. just happened? Why did you knock all those? That up? was your cat. That was literally Dude, my cat. That, that sounded like over something all these expensive. Fucking games. I, I had I had all my uh, my yep. games stacked up behind my computer, and my cat goes to like jump up on the windowsill and jumps on top of the games, and they all just fall, and he's just standing there like. Yeah, Another we're trying to shoot a, not to get a cat. Too. Another reason not to get it. Because look at this. You've Everybody been so... watching on YouTube. This is hey, this is what a dog hey, does. Hey, stop it. <laughs> Lay there like a person? Just lays. <laughs> mine's, mine's her own goddamn fucking business. That's what she does with dogs, I too. Cannot. Ella, bark. Hey, Ella. Nope. Bark. Damn it. Yeah, yeah, she's it, it's, than that. She's, she's, she's <laughs> it, for people that. I can't see, she's passed out. Yeah, she, she watch on YouTube. Was, she may be roofied. Like, I don't know. That dog is out. Yeah, she likes to sleep. 
All right. Anyway, here we go. moving on. Back that, that was for the YouTube it. people. Go, go ahead. <laughs> So what happened is there was kids up on the 13th floor. A police officer was sent up there, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna t- uh, talk, kind of summarize it. Uh, every time he would get up to the 13th floor, his flashlight would go out, so he it, the batteries would die. So the he'd walk officer. all the way down. Yeah, the police officer. So then he would uh, change his battery. And I guess he did it a few times, and then finally he was just like, you know what, I uh, I'm not messing with the 13th floor. So then he just. <laughs> Do you know what year this is? Uh, no, she didn't give me a uh, year. She had a lot of yep. stories, so I think it was over a very long time because I think she was there for 20 years or so, maybe even longer. What um, did she do as a there? For her work? She would give like little, um, I'm guessing partly tours and partly just like stories of the history of the hotel, uh, the paranormal mm-hmm. side of the hotel, and she yeah she would she would do a lot of stuff with like the stories. I think she did. I thought I saw that she would like do it like in the lobby or something. Yeah, yeah, it would and, be like in the uh, lobby. So I, I, I don't know if she did. Tw- I don't know if she did. Tours. I don't know. I didn't, I I didn't know. see that, but I know, I know she would just tell all these stories and everything, yeah. just like on like a certain night, uh, during the week or whatever. I think, which, which uh, I think is cool. I think it's a cool idea yeah. for a hotel, just like have a little bit of entertainment. Come to our lobby. A cool idea. And, but, yeah. yeah, especially if they kind of like. Under that management, they said that they kind of were okay with the paranormal and all. Yeah, that. yeah. So, it, so, uh, she and Q number three, she's going to talk about the most haunted floor at the Biltmore, and this is what she had to say. So this guy wakes up in the middle of the night. He feels like he's being watched. I mean, we've all had those those kind of uh, feelings. And he looks up, and there's a man in like a raincoat that's soaked, standing in front of his bed. I would kiss yeah. my pants. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> all right. So then he says, what do you want? And it disappears. So at that point, you're like, okay, I'm seeing things. And then he goes to the foot of the bed, and it's freaking damp. It's wet from the freaking raincoat. That's no, wild. thank you. That's fucked up. Yeah. Oh man, I, I, mean, I want to investigate this like, building. Take, yeah, take take it with a grain of salt. You know, people can say whatever they want to say, but it, it's just these are stories that we found, and some of these are are would be if they are legit, are just different worldly kind of stuff, Nuts. like on a different level. Yeah. And not you're right. I do want to investigate this, but uh, unfortunately, we can't. We can't. So, and that's why we're doing this episode. Right. Um. Not right now. Anyway, so maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe someday that'd be fantastic. You never know. Fantastic. With your guys' help and support, viewers, maybe we could reach that goal. Um, Q number four is she talks about the famous uh, shows in the world's largest swimming pool that uh, Jay talked about, and Jay kind of covered it, but this is gonna kind of back up the stories that he was telling about it. So, Q number four, Q Q Q. Tarzan, he 
was the first star. So. Yeah. And so they had a little boy who would jump off an 85-foot diving board into the pool. His father had a flaming, flaming um, tire, flaming ring. He would have to jump through it. Little boy, five years old. I, I had to pick... So the, these kind of shows were like circus acts almost. They have like five year olds jumping through jumping through rings of fire and off of an eighty seven diving every eighty seven foot diving board. No thank you. Oh, uh, you have you have Tarzan, like this Olympic style swimmer, uh, from Jay. With how Jay was explaining his abilities and his records and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, he that would be so cool. Like, to, to yeah. just have famous people that. Yeah, we have famous people that are athletes and we have famous people that are actors that are fairly athletic. But but back then, I feel like they were like one in the same. Like if you were like a football star or whatever or like a baseball star, like you can see these baseball stars like in movies and stuff like that. Like they just if you were famous, you were famous and you were lumped in with all the other famous people. There wasn't yeah. like different sectors like they are now today. Like, oh, that's an athlete. Oh, that's well, because back then all that there, all there really was was, you know, TV and music, yeah, Mostly radio music. and silent movies I mean, and imagine plays. That. Back in the day, like there was a point in time where the most famous people were either rulers or musicians. Yeah. Those were like the two famous things because there wasn't movie, there wasn't there wasn't anything on screen. Yeah. you were either a ruler, like a king or something, or you were a musician. It's just insane. It's nuts. So and now there's um, TikTok stars and <laughs> yeah, there's man how the reality TV stars like there's just a bunch of different sects now. <sighs> um, I'm, it, I'm kind of a big deal on TikTok, not gonna lie. Yeah, you are. I'm not. Uh, Q, Q, now there's Q podcasters. Number. Yeah, no, look at us <laughs> growing together. <laughs> Q number five. <laughs> <laughs> we ready for this? Q number yeah, five. Just Q. No. We're waiting Let's for you. Go. Q, Q number five. Why was the seventh I can't, floor? I can't mute our mics like I normally can. Why? Why was the seventh floor that she believed most haunted? And this is what she said. So she believed the operating room was on the seventh floor for the hotel um, because there wasn't any major stories that she found or anything like that uh, relating to why it would be so haunted. So um, with it being a VA hospital and sadly a lot of people die on the operating table with, you know, injuries and that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, it's a possibility, you know, it's a, yeah. a plausible yeah. explanation. That was, and that I was just, my thought on it was like something like that. Was that a, was a big floor for the hospital, honestly, mm -hmm. and didn't really have anything to do necessarily with the, uh, like the mob, mafia, all that kind of stuff, but yeah. more related to the hospital for sure. Yeah. So, and that's going to conclude Linda's interview. It was awesome. Uh, thank you so much again, Linda. I appreciate yeah, everything awesome. that you did for us. So, and, You're uh, the best. Th so, so that I think that's pretty much going to wrap up for episode eight. Short little episode. I think these remote episodes are going to be a little bit shorter like this unless we have a lot more to go into to delve into talk about and unless we get like more interviews. So, um, yeah. I mean, an, an hour and 40 minutes, that's not bad. Almost two no. hours. That's not bad at all. Mm -hmm. I think it's a nice little, yeah. nice little sweet episode and considering we're going to be doing a lot more of these. And True. please bear yeah. with us for these uh, sound bites, though, because um, I we are getting a... Uh, audio mixer for anthony he just doesn't have one right now so he has to just like like a caveman play it in front of the microphone just, just hold it up yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's my thank god my arms and my forearms are so strong fucking, fucking just ripped it's a, it, it's yeah please just shut up <laughs> it's all it's all just it's it's kinetic it's kinetic energy from your ass cheeks just you know flowing yeah, through your body big, big. I, it's those I cakes. Have the power. <laughs> it's the cakes, bro. It's the cakes. But yeah, so that's gonna wrap up the episode eight of the haunting table for the Biltmore Hotel, Baltimore, Baltimore. Hotel, the goddamn Baltimore Hotel, <laughs> the Biltmore Hotel in Coral Gables, Florida, Miami, Florida. That was fun. That's a cool story. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, like I said, we're gonna do more of these. So 
if there's a story you want us to cover, send it to us. Do it. We'll cover it. If there's a cool story you want us to go over, you want us to talk about, maybe research the town or whatever, send it to us. And you can send those to us by sending it to our email, which is at the haunting table. Or it's the at. haunting table. I don't know why I said that thing <laughs> at haunting underscore table, but the haunting table at gmail.com. You can send us stuff there, whatever you want. Uh, or you can go to haunting underscore table. And that's for uh, Twitter and Instagram, like I said in the beginning of the episode. You could, you could, you know, comment on pictures there. You could direct message us. You could tweet us. Whatever you want to do uh, for places you want us to get into to investigate. Because if you have a spot that you can get us into, we will investigate it. Um, yeah, absolutely. We still, we still do want to do that. Like yeah. the last few have been these remote ones. Um, it's honestly just the times. <laughs> it's heartbreaking because like, we it, want to investigate. That's the whole yeah. point of the podcast. Uh, <laughs> right. But I still enjoy the fact that we can give you cool stories. So that, um, if you could find us a place to get into, we'll do it. Or if you have a story you want us to cover, we will do it. So send that to us either way you want haunt, at haunting underscore table for Tinder and Hinge and Bumble. Oh, yeah, it's okay. we're up to like, almost 500 matches. I was going to ask you, yeah, sweet, like 500 matches is on Tinder. <laughs> we are fire. Our yeah. 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 profile is fire. Hell yeah. But uh, joking aside, Instagram, Twitter, haunting underscore table, or at, or oh, Jesus Christ, man. I'm losing my fucking you are all, mind. You are all We'll over just end it, place, end it on a good note. <sighs> and on the final oh, note, what is it? Uh, the haunting underscore at the haunting just tables score scores shit. Anyway, so thanks everybody, and then of course thank you so much for the everybody that purchased merch from us, and we will have more upcoming. We are still in the building a website phase where we can link our merch to, um, and where we could just be posting stuff about us. And uh, Tyler, go ahead and take it away with our, uh, the upcoming website possibly, and then the upcoming yep. merch and how to support us. Yep. So uh, we're looking into a, um, like Jay was saying, just a website, just a general website. Um, we'll hopefully get that up uh, soon. We would like, it, it, I think the kind of the goal is to have like it pretty well set up by end of the year, like completely set up, I guess would be the better way to say that. But uh, that we're going to link it up with um, a merch store where you can just go there and buy what you want. You can put put our logo and other designs on anything. That's yeah. kind of the goal, you know. And, and Anthony, up to you. So, toss up a couple pictures of the uh, the two sweaters we'll be selling first. Okay, cool. Yep. Right, I can do that for you here. Yep. Oh yeah, <laughs> boom, right here. Um, <laughs> I forgot. I'm weird. <laughs> here. Over here. Um, so we got that. Another good way, so we're, uh, support us there, obviously. Another good way to do uh, support us is at our PayPal, which is paypal.me slash, is it the haunting table? Yep. Is it that? Paypal.me okay. yep. forward slash the haunting table. If you want to help yep. produce an episode, and then you, of yep. course, can put in a note there. We'll read it live, and we'll thank you. I, I mean immensely. If you are gracious enough to be willing to help produce the episode, by going here, over there. That's fucking here's, awesome. Here's this. Take it. Make yes. this episode. Absolutely. That's yep. awesome. Yep. We also and have our Patreon. We do. And that one would be um, at haunting underscore table, just like Instagram and Twitter on Patreon. We have different tiers set up there. I believe there are four of them. And you can choose which one you want, pretty much. You'll get rewarded for it. What are the tiers? From, we have got Ghost Boy. Ghost Hunter, Ghost Buster, and Ghost Nutter. Ghost Nutter. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I feel like the, I feel like one of those is. I, do we have five? Five tiers? I feel like I'm missing one. No, I, I think know. we just have four. But four? you yeah. you get a ton of different rewards, behind the scene pictures, maybe even if you get up there, uh, bonus episodes where the our Patreon people will will only view. Um, that those are things we're working on right now. But uh, yeah, different pictures, maybe video clips of behind the scenes stuff. We we got the hookup. If you want to, uh, just you know, go to Patreon. Yeah. Yep. So, and now that we have merch, I can, or starting to get merch, I can tweak some of these tiers to make them a little bit, a uh, little bit better. Maybe get yourself a free hoodie depending upon the tier that you're and in. And we're gonna have masks mm. too. Masks are the next thing we're yeah. down the pipeline. Masks yep. and t-shirts. Hell yeah. Nice yep. haunting uh, table 
logo right on your mouth, right where you could suck air through. Just, yeah. <laughs> so excited about that. But anyway, yep, exactly. Uh, I think that covers about all that. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming by. Does anybody else have any other input they want to say before we head out? Nope. Thank you guys for viewing. We appreciate you guys. Thank support. you so much. Absolutely. And we will awesome. see you next time. But until then, stay safe and happy haunting. Haunting. <laughs> so bad. Ha, ha, ha.